Ethnicification is a set of measures aimed at cleansing the society, culture, press, economy, education, law, and politics from the influence of Nazi ideology. The hero of Estonia is Ses Unterscherführer Harald Nugisix, the last Estonian Knights of Third Reich, Knights Cross. This is my highest decoration, which I appreciate. This is the Medal of Gratitude of Estonian people. I'm very proud of it. The Estonian people gave it to me. They're the heroes of Estonia too. Every year they gather in the town a cinema to remember how heroically they defended Hitler. This as brothers from different European countries join them. Latvia, Riga, also former SS soldiers. Much in honor of the first battle with the Red Army. Lithuania, Vilnius, Declaration of Independence Day. Seventy years after Nuremberg trial, the people who swore to Hitler are called heroes in Europe. There are countries where neo-fascist methods of government are used and where the influence of neo-fascist ideology remains in the society, culture, education and economics. After the Second World War, the leaders of victorious countries decided to create the conditions under which the revival of Nazism is not possible in Europe. The Germans had to go through a purification process called denazification. The future builders of the new democratic Germany and the United Europe reburied the victims of Nazi crimes with their own hands. Here's what you've done, told them other nations. Look at this. But European nightmare of the 20th century, 30s and 40s, wasn't only the Germans' fault. Nationalist and fascist regimes become common for Europe at the time. Dictators and leaders of the nation appeared in the Baltic states too. President for life, Antonis Metena, came to power in Lithuania as a result of coup d'etat in 1926. The leader of the Latvian nation, so-called the great sower Carlos Ulmanis, came to power in Latvia as a result of coup d'etat in 1934. Konstantin Petz, the Secretary of State and then the President, grabbed the power in Estonia as a result of coup d'etat too. The level of praise, the cult of the leader and the cult of personality were different for each dictatorship. However, all mentioned political regimes propagated conservative values. They all declared Estonia for Estonians, Latvia for Latvians, Lithuania for Lithuanians. All of them were talking. This is our country. We live here. We are here to rule. These regimes of the total state were supported by the population in full. The Baltic dictators fell in 1940. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania became the part of the Soviet Union. Despite the struggle of the Soviet authorities with the pro-fascist underground, nationalist sentiments in society remained until the beginning of the war between USSR and Germany. Сегодня, 22 июня, в 4 часа утра, без объявления войны, германские войска напали на нашу страну. Greek, the Red Army wasn't able to stop Wehrmacht 
and retreated, surrendering one Baltic city after another. Lithuania was occupied in one week. On 23rd June, the Lithuanian activist front rebelled and formed a temporary government under the leadership of Jusas Ambrazevichus. From the Lithuanian activist front's direction of liberation of Lithuania, the 24th March 1941, that the whole nation will begin moving in this way and such a tense atmosphere for the occupants, the Jews and the Russian communists, will be set up in the country that the fear and panic will arise among them and will break any resistance from their side. And the people began moving. The pogroms, rape and murders had begun even before the Nazis came. From the report of Commander Eisensau Group A Brigandeführer SS Stalecker on the activities of group in the occupied areas of Belarus and Baltic states. Lithuanian partisans killed 1,500 Jews at the night of the first pogrom. A large number of synagogues were burned or demolished. The Jewish quarter with 60 houses were burned. 2,300 Jews were naturalized the same way at the next night. Such actions were carried out in other parts of Lithuania. But they were smaller scale. These actions extended to the rest of the communists too. Almost 180,000 Jews were killed in Lithuania in the first months of the war. Hitler's army captured Riga on July the 1st. And then the pogroms against Jews started. This young man, Victor Arais, received the law decree because of the ability to study without payment of the Soviet period. With his friends, he established the so-called Sonderkommando Arais. They were notable for the great zeal in killing the Jews and communists. On July the 4th, a group of drunk as hell policemen, who called themselves Aitsargi at the time, surrounded the central Riga synagogue with all the people who were inside. There were local Jews and about 200 refugees from Lithuania. Aitsargi dosed the synagogue with gasoline and set on fire. Those people who tried to escape the shot. No German officers and soldiers were there. Sonder Commander Arais became a part of Latvian auxiliary police, which had been raised by the German authorities and submit to SD. From the announcement in the Latvian newspaper De Villa, July 1941. All nationally oriented Latvians, members of Perkon Krus, students, officers, guards, and others who want actively participate in purifying our land from harmful elements, can come to the security team leaders and enroll in. They, others, Civilized Latvians went and enrolled in, in order to clean Latvia of them, and of them too, and of these ones as well, because they are Kaik, they are not of their tribe. By the middle of July 1941, the Red Army was able to stop the attack of the Nazis in the Baltic states. It saved the lives of nearly three thousand Estonian Jews. Otherwise, the situation in Estonia repeated. Even before the retreat of the Red Army, the troops of the Forest Brothers were formed in its rear. The Forest Brothers became the backbone of the voluntary self-defense forces Amakites. In 1941, 7,357 people were executed by volunteers from Amakaitse and police in Estonia. Claire to the head of Reich Main Security Office, 
R S H A R. Heitrich, the twenty fifth of November, nineteen forty one. There were about one thousand Jews in Tallinn. The rest of all Jewish males over the age of sixteen was nearly finished. All of them were executed by self-defense units under the gardens of Eisen Commando 1A. For Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians, there was nothing new in the fact that the state has enemies and they must be removed, including forcing into ghettos. Lithuanians, Estonians and Latvians realized that they had found the enemy already during the Soviet period. Those national leaders who remained after the deportation of 14 June 1941 were pro-Nazi-minded persons. In general, they shared the idea of destruction of the Jews, of the usefulness and accuracy of this action. In fact, we were schoolboys when we went to fighting. Of course, everyone went to fight for Estonia, not for the Nazis or fascists, but schoolboys are schoolboys. It was more of a game. One boy goes, calls another to go. I went with my classmates too. But young Harald and his friends swear north to Hitler. Latvian and Lithuanian police battalions took part in punitive operations against the civilian population in Ukraine, Belarus, Poland and Russia. From the interrogation of Johannes Oswald Rahumel, the private of the 36th police battalion. This battalion took part in extermination of Jews in Belarus and the repressions against civilians and prisoners of war on the territory of Estonia. Question. What did the 36th police battalion when it was in the city of Navohrudak? Answer. The main task of our 36th police battalion was arresting the Soviet citizens, mostly Jews, and then escorting them to execution. The soldiers and officers of our battalion took part in the executions of Soviet citizens in the area of the city of Navohrudak. The battalions which were formed in Estonia took part in anti-partisan operations in the Pskov region and Belarus. Police units under the command of Alphonse Reben took part in punitive operation in Leningrad region. One Lithuanian and eight Latvian police battalions and a company of 36th Estonian police battalion took part in the operation with the magic. During the operation, more than 200 villages were destroyed. 11,383 people were shot, hanged and burned alive. 14,175 people were driven away. Children from Belarusian villages were sent to the camp Selespils, located at a point 18 kilometers southeast from Riga. From the statements of the witness Laukalaitis, a former prisoner of Selespils concentration camp, 20,000 Soviet citizens with their children were driven to the camp in March 1943. The SS immediately took children away from parents. There were terrible scenes. Mothers didn't give the children away. Germans and Latvian police wrenched them from their hands. Infants and children under five years old were placed in separate barracks where they died in droves. More than 3,000 children died in such a way only for one year. 
in the Baltic states, the West established more than 300 concentration camps for various purposes. We are on the territory of the former concentration camp. In this building, which is a bank today, was located a clothing storehouse. A watchtower was near it. Members of Omakaitse, who guarded the camp, were on duty there. They marched with songs and with the tricolor, the Estonian national flag, on the street. The formation of the Baltic religions began in February 1943. In 1943, Himmler ordered to combine all the police and paramilitary forces on their territory of the Reich Commissariat Ostland into Volunteer Legion Lettland. Zonderkommando Reis was fully impressed in this legion. As almost no Jews left in Eastern Europe, they took part in military operations. They are called the Latvian Legionnaires today. The Legion Friends societies appeared in the cities. When the Red Army began to approach the borders of the USSR, the Nazis had to form national administrations which gave the appearance of autonomy. The German authorities put the only one problem to the leaders of these national administrations, ensure the conscription in the SS division. The activities of Yuri Ulutz as a head of puppet Estonian National Committee facilitated the mobilization of Estonian in the SS. It is appreciated by the modern Estonian politicians and historians. The head of Latvian social self-government, ex-general of the Latvian army Oskos Dankes, urged Latvians to dissolve with their blood the place in the community of free nations in the face of the Reich. By the year 1944, 20th SS Division was formed in Estonia. The 15th and 19th SS Divisions were formed in Latvia. The local Lithuanian Brigade was founded by Lithuanian nationalists. It started with actions against Polish partisans and civilians. The Lithuanian officers didn't want to fight for the Reich in 1944. They dreamed of their own Lithuanian state free from strangers – Jews, Poles, Belarusians and Russians. They finished the war in concentration camp Salaspils. These are three SS men, recipients of the Knight's Cross. Obersturmbamführer SS Alfons Rebane, Obersturmbamführer SS Harald Ryupalu and Unterscherführer SS Harald Nugisex. In the ranks of the 20th, the first Estonian SS division, they had to win a place in the Nazi's sound for Estonians. It was the most important. 78,000 Estonians ran away. They were able to escape because they had been holding the front line for seven months there. They said in all the books and newspapers now, yes, you've got the state justice now. Elvis' parents were able to run away because we were holding the front line. But then we even didn't think about it. Many of those who ran away from the Soviet troops were collaborators. They were guilty of Nazi crimes. Hundreds of thousands of prisoners in concentration camps were killed during that seven months. But no one talks about this, because those who were in the camps were not their family, 
not their tribe. They were strangers or communists. When the front was broken and the German troops began to retreat live in the Baltic states, those fighters for freedom didn't tear off their sons of the SS and didn't stay in their homeland. Their bloody way continued in Poland and Czechoslovakia. In May 1945, many of them were afraid of the deserved punishment for their crimes and tried to go to the Western allies of the USSR. Not without reason, they hoped to continue the war, but in other uniforms. The hero of the Estonian nation, the fighter for freedom, the fourth knight of Knight's Cross, Estonian Sturmbannführer SS Paul Maitla. He was caught by Czechoslovak resistance fighters and was shot as a Nazi. They defined it just by looking at his uniform. It happened that when we lost, people started to tell, fellows, the war is over, let's move to the American side, so as not to become prisoners. And we went handing up slot machines on our necks, and everything happened. People jumped out of the woods, hands up, we have surrendered to fate. Harold Nugisex, as well as several thousands of his companions, found themselves in the Soviet filtration camp. Others managed to avoid a trial in their homeland. The former commander of the 1st Battalion of the 15th Latvian SS Grenadier Division's 34th Regiment, Victor Orais, could find refuge in the West. He was declared a war criminal only in 1979 and died in a prison. Many collaborators, SS and SD officers, commanders of the police battalions, were in high demand in the West. There was a link between the secret services of the Western Bloc and bandit groups of the Forest Brothers and National Partisans. As national partisans are considered those who fought against the Soviet regime. But in 1940, when the Soviet regime was establishing, no one went into forest and fought against it. If you look at the materials of historians commissioned under the president of Latvia, which is not always objective to the Legion or to the Red Army, but even in these materials can be seen that 75% of the national partisans were former SS men. Their hands tainted with blood. They blemished themselves in actions against the civilian population in Belarus, Poland, and in the Pskov and Leningrad regions of Russia. They had no choice but to hide in the woods. No one gave them food for free, so they had to rob to get the food. And it is said now that they were national partisans who fought against the regime. Yes, I can admit that they were attacking some people who worked for the Soviet regime. They attacked the town councils and the police stations. They killed teachers, commsomal and communist activities. But is this the fight when you attack unarmed people at night, shot them back or come to the village at night and slaughter the whole family? Is this called the fight? In my opinion, the fight is something else. I do not dare to call these people heroes. There were even no talks about the Baltic collaborators' denazification. From a report of the United States High Commission in Germany, signed by the Secretary of State John McCloy, April 13, 1950, Baltic Waffen-SS units, Baltic legions, are to be considered as separate and distinct in purpose, ideology, activities, and qualifications for membership from the German SS, and therefore the Commission holds them not to be a movement hostile to the government of the United States. Thus, the fighters for freedom were made from criminals, from the verdict of the Nuremberg trial. 
the trial comes to conclusion that the criminal activities of the SS were quite well known by the members of the organization in order to justify its recognition as a criminal organization. The criminal program was widespread as a whole and included the murder in such dramatic proportions that the criminal activities of the organization were to get fame. In the Soviet Union, Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians were legally among the nations who won a victory over Nazism. Soldiers of the National Corps of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania in the Soviet Army and their allies saved their nations from the sentence imposed to them by Hitler. According to the Plan Ost, the territory of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia was to be colonized. The personal fate of Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians depended on their racial characteristics. Those who conformed to these characteristics were declared racially valuable. Racially defective people from the Baltic states were subject to deportation. Of course, we must remember that 56 people from Latvia are among the writers among the nations in Israel Institute Yad Vashem. They saved Jewish families during the Nazi occupation, which was dealing with the real-life engagement. If they were found, they were killed. Despite the massive and voluntary cooperation with the Nazis, Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians, the citizens of the USSR were considered in the Soviet Union as victims of the Nazi occupation. By 1947, the majority of those who collaborated with the occupiers or served in the Nazi armed groups were released. Only Wehrmacht Police, SS and SD officers, officials of the occupation administrations and those who were involved in crimes against civilians were arrested and deported. In later years, the attitude to the former collaborators changed only for the better. Once they arrived, having serious reports in their hands, witnesses were there, signatures were given and my signature was the only one that was missing. I said, it will not work. I won't join the party in any case. I want to go home to Estonia. I will be thrown out from there if I join the party. I spoke openly as it was, and they left me in peace. Khrushchev established the new principles of the national policy. The main idea was in promoting the national stuff. If you are Estonian, Latvian or Lithuanian, then you will move up the career ladder. But if you aren't a national stuff, Russian for example, then the opportunities for advancement decrease. It became advantages for the career growth to be Lithuanian in Lithuania, Latvian in Latvia and Estonian in Estonia. As a result, the national staff which highly valued their nationality and their nation found themselves on the top of the party administration. The central government gave benefits to Baltic republics, developed their language, culture, education, rearing step by step a new nationalist elite. In the summer of 1991, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania resigned from the Soviet Union. When there was no control of Moscow, the national elites of the Baltic republics declared preserving of the state succession of the authoritarian nationalist regimes that existed until the summer of 1940. The goal remained the same with the national policy, to create the conditions under which strangers, the Russian-speaking population, will be assimilated as second-class citizens or will leave the country. These grand purple documents are aliens' passports, which were given to Russian-speaking population in Latvia and Estonia after deprivation of citizenship. Vladimir Simon, as a child, was driven by the Nazis to Estonia. 
His family couldn't return home after the war because their home city Korachayev was raised to the ground. We became occupiers without citizenship immediately. I was given the residence permit by my cousin's sister. We were together in the concentration camp. Still has limited five-year resistance permit. There are a lot of such women prisoners, and their children also have a limited residence permit. Joseph Koren was born in Latvia. I was born in Riga in 1956. I've always felt my belonging to Latvia. When the question of independence was raised, I had no doubt that we should vote for an independent country. They made us believe that we would get independence from the Soviet Union and we would build a small, cozy Latvia, where all the people would live together and everyone would have equal rights. When a law on citizenship was passed in 1993, I was enrolled in the number of non-citizens, the category invented by the Latvian authorities. And I had to get this passport on which is written Alien's passport. Our future populist state subdivides the country inhabitants into three classes – citizens, subjects and foreigners. Deprivation of political rights made it possible to limit political, economic and social opportunities of the Russian-speaking population. The policy of segregation of the Russian-speaking inhabitants is justified by the elites of the Baltic states. In their opinion, the reason of this segregation is the legacy of the Soviet and Nazi occupation. From an interview with the president of Estonia, Thomas Henrik Ilfes, to the Swiss newspaper Der Bund. Why the Russian language is not an official language in Estonia? Now, when we have finally gained independence, whether the language of the occupying government should be in the second language of the country? Don't ask me ridiculous questions. Only those who fought against the Soviet Union are considered the fighters for freedom. They are all forgiven. The blood on their hands isn't noticed. This young man is a hero of the Thuania Jewish Luksha, who fought against the communists. In 1997, he was posthumously awarded with the Order of the Vitesse Cross. There's a film about him. The Association of Lithuanian Jews in Israel accused this fighter for freedom of pogroms and murders. Standartenführer says Waldemar's ways, the chief of the order police in Riga, was one of the Holocaust organizers in Latvia. He is buried in the pantheon of heroes of the Latvian nation at Riga Prenthren Cemetery. The ashes of another Standartenführer says Alfons Rubane was reborn in Estonia in 1999 with all military honors, in the presence of members of the Estonian government and the senior executive service of the army. From recognition of former torturers as heroes, the Baltic elites have moved to recognition of the continuity of collaborationist governments. From the speech of Estonian President Thomas Henry Ilves, dedicated to Yuri Ulutz, the continuity of Estonian statehood was uncompromisingly maintained during all occupations. It wasn't passed to the puppets of the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. Without legal continuity, we wouldn't have the continuity de facto. In 1999, the Lithuanian Parliament declared the continuity of the Lithuanian interim government formed on June 23rd, 1941. This government was killed in mass killing of civilians. It thanked Hitler for the liberation of Lithuania. Policy of aversion to strangers, honoring the heroes of the Nazis and construction of mononational state is supported by the Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians. The problem is that they keep silence. 
Russians were standing in these humiliating queues to the Department of Citizenship and Migration under their eyes. The war prone soldier, the terminal D, the language inspection, the language inquisition, and other things under their eyes. Why do these people keep quiet? This is not a problem of fear. This is the problem of convenience. It is convenient to be blind. What is dangerous about it? The mind of the nation and a cultural code is being rewritten. If being in the SS is becoming the norm for people, for the maturing generation, then crimes of SS and crimes of Nazism automatically become the norm too. Thus, the SS is being whitewashed and becomes something casual. I would have called it the fascists in casual style. As our soldiers became heroes for the younger generation, the last nights defending Europe from the wild eastern hordes. They know nothing about crimes of their heroes. If there was the Holocaust in the Baltic states, then it was accomplished by faceless policemen and Germans. The attitude to the victims of Nazism is portrayed on humor or sarcasm. This is an advertisement for a weight loss preparation. Ovens of Auschwitz are advertised of Hitten. This is a blasphemy, a mockery of memory and people. We gathered seven, eight thousand people at the Independence March. It has never happened before. It is obvious that the ruling elite had become very embittered about it, because they are afraid of lower classes' movements. They think that if only they we come to power, then we will destroy this blue empire immediately. They realize that if all the people who are formerly belonging to the European Union now get up from the knees on their feet, they will realize that they don't need any Euro Federation. They can and should live freely. Richard Sekutis is trying to come to power. For the time being, he can't manage to do it, but it is just for the time being. Without the blue, black, red, and without gypsy camp, these guys are already in the parliament and in the government in Latvia. Janeta Yenizeme Grande and Yanis Bordens, the Latvian government ministers of the National Alliance All for Latvia. Being a leader of the youth organization All for Latvia, it was not a political party at the time. Ravis Zinterts told me during the radio program where we are participated together. You see, we are not against the Russians, we are not against the Jews, and we are not against the Latvians. Russians should live in Russia, Jews should live in Israel, and Latvians should live in Latvia. Latvian must be master in Latvia. Shall I be your slave then? Well, why a slave? Could I be a master in Latvia? No, you're not Latvian. Is that Nazism or not? Alliance of for Latvia got its political capital by organizing marches of SS legionnaires. Kāri perkonkrusta biedri brīvprātīgi saformēja tas aucamas pašai sardzības vienības ar štābu Rīgā. Šīs vienības komandēja topošais Latviešu leģionā. Europe, European Union was built on the promise never again. It was built to bring all the countries together to make a big family. But when you enter a family, there are rules. And those, one of those rules is exactly never again. It's to fight against racism, it's to fight against Nazism, it's to fight against anti-Semitism. Today, those who are supporting anti-Semitism, those who are supporting racism, those who are supporting the Waffen-SS, they have the floor. 
they are the, 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 the king in the castle today. And it's really a shame. It's really, I, I can't understand. Latvia is a member of the International Task Force for Remembrance of the Holocaust. And it's very hypocritic. It's very, it's nonsense that on one side you are a member of such an important organization to remember what happened 70 years ago. In Estonia, the chairman of the political party reform, Andrus Ansip, was fulfilling a campaign promise that brought him the post of the Prime Minister and organized a dismantling of the monument to the Soviet liberators in the center of Tallinn in April 2007. Thousands of Tallinn inhabitants went on the streets to protect the monument, which represented to them the memory of their ancestors and the victory over Nazism. Their protest was brutally suppressed. People were beaten on the streets, grabbed and taken to a concentration camp in the D terminal of the passenger port in the center of Tallinn. The prisoners, including women and teenagers, squatted on the concrete floor. If someone was trying to get up, then this person got hit with a baton. Several hundred people were beaten. Concentration camp de terminal existed for 24 hours on the territory of the European Union. What is happening in the Baltic states now is a process of Nazification. Baltic elites, which support European values and words, in fact, pursue a policy of national segregation and the glorification of Nazis, justifying this with the horrors of Stalin's repressions. What is happening in the Baltic is called the hidden problem in Europe. They don't understand that those things which are reality for Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, now can become an ideological delayed action mine under the base of European unity and security.